Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Michael, the Shy City Yacker, and I appreciate you for joining me out on this trip. Now, I am doing some fishing, but since it's kind of quiet, nothing's really happening right now, waiting for the sun to go down some more, I figured I'd talk to you and share with you what I found to be the best settings on the new LiveScope Plus for trolling applications for salmon and trout on Lake Michigan. And this probably extends, honestly, to any and all of the Great Lakes, whether you're on Erie for walleye, if you're uh, for salmon or trout in any of the other Great Lakes. Um, the way I'm set, uh, I've got this whole set up is I got my pole mount here and it's in forward facing mode, but it's pointed straight back. And with that cone, I'm able to see, uh, for instance, my flasher fly is right there. You can see it. You can actually see uh, the weight for the torpedo weight down there with a spoon back 30 some feet behind it. So I'm stacking that spread. So if a fish comes up for that flasher, doesn't like it, it breaks off and it sees a spoon right above and increases my hookup opportunities. Um, you can really see your spread. And that's to me is amazing. I can see how the fish are reacting to my presentation. Maybe I need to dial uh, or, or need to, um, you know, for instance, uh, switch something out because they're coming up, but they're not committing. So there's, there's a lot of uh, ways I've been using this to learn about the fish behavior and not simply just to see them when they're going to hit. That's always cool, but more so I want to see where they're at in the water column, how they're relating to the presentation. And so that's the real benefit for this uh, LiveScope Plus system to do that um, over especially the original LiveScope because you've got increased clarity, target separation, not to mention what people mostly uh, don't mention enough with the LiveScope Plus is the extended range. Right now I've got it out to 100 and if I wanted to, I can actually go out, uh, let's see, we'll extend the out to like 120. We still can see out to 120. I go out to 135, still holding on at 135. It's pretty impressive. Um, let's see, in fact, how far can we go? We go out to 150. 150 starts, you start to lose it out there. You're starting to lose it out there. But right now, with the water clarity I have here, remember, this is all based on your body of water. The Great Lakes, Lake Michigan is very clear water. I can see right now out to 135, and this is about as best of the water condition as we get. So it's really, really clear. It's a sunny day, it's calm. There's not a lot of sediment in the water. Now, what you're looking at on my screen is the live scope in like all the default settings. Sure, you can see like your flash or fly, but you got the ghost tree going on in there. You've got other kind of echo things happening um, over in this column area. It's a little bit cluttered. Some people really like to see just everything. And to me that personally, it's a preference thing here. Um, that just leads me to kind of get like false positives. Me thinking that something that's there when it's really not. So I would rather dial it back a little bit. I want the signal strong enough so that I can see my presentations and these fish are going to be big enough. The ones that I'm interested in anyway, that they're going to appear on it. So let me walk you through and share with you what I've, what I've figured out to be the best settings. And generally so far day to day, these settings hold. Um, at most, I might push up the gain up or down a little bit within, you know, five plus or minus five up or down. Um, but other than that, every day I've come back on the water and it, it's been holding up really good. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First, we're going to do is go to menu. And once we're in the menu here, we're going to go to your gain. Um, I take the gain off of auto and I'm going to start it at about, let's go about 65. So we'll kind of get it right here. A little higher we want it from and that's fine 66 is fine you get the idea we're going to back out of that next depth range we're going to take the depth range out of auto the reason for this and we could do it from this menu here we'll just do it right from the screen um, here's the auto button right here i'm going to take it off of auto because i want to get as much of the water and have the very bottom of the uh, 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 the bottom just in that very bottom layer of the screen what it does is it, it opens up right it opens up your imaging so that everything is a little bit bigger if you start cramming it down remember there's only so much room on you uh, on the screen um the, the farther out you extend your range we're out at 130 things start to get a little bit smaller remember because we're targeting pelagic fish they're going to be swimming around in the water column that's what i'm interested in now if you're doing a different kind of fishing application where you want to see the bottom then obviously that would be a bit different you know if you're looking for fish that are sitting on the bottom but for trolling applications right now this is how we, we got it take it off of auto and just manually adjust you know if we get it's 43 feet right now if we got deeper than that i'd hit the plus button and bring that up a little bit if we got shallower i'd drop it back down so you want to just keep 
um, the bottom from taking too much of your, your screen real estate. In auto mode, it'll do that. It'll put it up a little higher and you're losing space where you can actually see stuff. So that's the first thing. Next, we're in the gain at 66. We can touch it down and get it down at 65. We're there. Um, our range. Sure, we can go out to 135. It doesn't mean you need to do that. I'm really extending my range out just as far as my longest line back out is. Now, my longest line right now is a three color lead core. Um, it's not necessarily gonna be in the range. It's too far for this. If you had a live scope XR, you probably could see it because that's a 500 foot range. So you could probably capture it there. So I can't really see what's going on with my uh, lead core, I'm not too worried about it. I'm mostly worried about my, my torpedo lines with the flasher and the spoon down. I want to keep an eye on those more importantly. Lead core does its own thing. I'm not worried about it. Um, so with that being said, we're going to bring the, the range back in something a little bit tighter. What I have found is like right inside like 80 feet at most, when you're about 80 feet range wise, you really get good, you know, imaging, um, everything stands out a bit better. You can see it right here. The flasher fly just kind of pops out a lot more. Your fish, when they come into the cone, you can see them a bit better. It's just something about inside of 80 foot range for the trolling application, things really just kind of pop out and um, it's, it's hard to not see it. So we're starting to clean it up a little bit. Things are starting to look better, but we've still got a lot of kind of stuff going on in here. You've got some of this, I don't know, this echo location thing going i don't know what that is you got the ghost tree pretty visible right here so we're gonna go into the settings um and at this point we're gonna go to sonar setup we're gonna go to noise reject and i put the noise reject reject on to low that's gonna help clear it up a little bit go back out we're gonna go to tvg i'm gonna put that on low as well that helps to clean it up a little bit more it's very subtle but it's noticeable finally you're gonna go to ghost reject and i put that on auto now when we come back out to our screen we have a much cleaner imaging um, everything looks a lot better than what it was before you're not getting a lot of artifacting in fact and we could do is we go to noise reject if you want to put it on high right high works as well look how clean that imaging is now the trade-off when you go to high is that there's it introduces latency because the gls black box which is underneath my seat is doing more work to process and clean up that feed so you will see things there'll be a little bit of a delay in what you're seeing um if that doesn't matter to you then by all means run high you get a really really clean image again as you see right here let me clear this up you can really see the weight the flasher back there um, and then if we go back out in sonar settings and we go to noise reject, if you put it on like on a medium, you're kind of getting more of a real time ish, it's still a little bit of a latency, but it's certainly a little bit more real, real time. And the artifacting is a lot less. I think medium is a nice compromise where you get the screen, screen clarity. Um, and you also just, uh, don't introduce so much latency. Next we'll hit menu again. We're going to go back into the settings here. We're going to go to sonar setup. We're going to go to appearance. Now, what we're gonna do for appearance here is your color scheme. You can choose whatever one you like. I like the blue. I just always like the blue. You can pick whatever color uh, scheme you like, but color gain, color gain 100%. I want all the colors. Um, what this does is it, when, you, when you use the color gain in addition to the gain itself, it helps to just push everything out forward more and highlight everything a lot more, more intense. So when you raise the color gain up to 100, that means I don't have to use as much actual gain. If we go back out here, um, I don't have to use as much gain. That's why I got it at 65%. So I would suggest just put your color gain at 100, as we did here, go back to appearance, color gain 100%. And then your color limit, I put that at 30. Um, I'm still learning a bit about what it does. I've toyed around with it. For example, we'll take it here, we'll boost it all the way up and it clears up. So I guess what this color limit is set, if we have it at 100% at the top end and the color limit I'm guessing here um, cuts it off so that there's a bottom point. So you see, if we put it all the way to 100, it basically blanks out our screen. If we bring it back down, you start to see more and more and more stuff. Um, I put it at 30% because it starts, it looks like it clears up some stuff, some artifacting and it just works. So 30% right there works. Trails is another thing. I leave, I leave this on, I actually have it on. Some people don't like it on. I do. Um, it allows me to see 
the direction the fish is flying in from. I put it on fast because I don't want that streak to last on the screen forever and uh, kind of confuse me. So put on trails fast. It allows you to see what you know which way that fish is coming from. Is it coming from the bottom up, top down? Is it coming from the front of the presentation? Is it coming from behind? Um, it's just a way to kind of identify you know where that fish is and where it's where it's approaching from. Um, I leave the bottom fill off, and that is essentially the entire settings. It, it's really simple. Um, just leave it in these manual modes, dial it all in, and you can get a clean image just like we have right here. I mean, you see that flasher fly really, really good rotating right there. The minute a fish comes up, we're gonna watch the entire thing go down, and that's the fun part about it. And it also helps when you see fish just swim by it. They're not interested. It let's me know. I might want to change out my my stuff here um, because they're clearly not interested. So hopefully this helps guys with your settings for your uh, Garmin LiveScope Plus if you're setting it up for trolling applications. This is what I found so far to just work really, really great. Great clarity, target separation, imaging on these fish coming in. It's pretty amazing, and I'm just really glad I got this LiveScope uh, Plus. So if you got any questions, uh, leave it in the comments below. Make sure you throw the video a thumbs up if you found it useful, uh, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more. You'll see some of these uh, clips with the fish coming in, taking the presentation here and it's gonna be a lot of cool stuff coming up on the channel as we use this live scope so if you're interested in that stay tuned see you guys later